This is Comic Fix by the Glick. I'm your host, Jason Glick. Hey, Jason, what do you have on tap for us tonight? Well, it's like tonight, I guess something, it's a something that should be like more um, like epic than like, you know, we're making it sound because it's, it's like it's the continuation of a legendary series by an author who's become even more famous in the years since he was prevented from, from, from finishing it. I'm talking about um, the continuation of um, Miracle Man by Neil Gaiman and Mark Buckingham. Um, for everyone who needs like a, like a little refresher here, uh, Miracle Man was the uh, uh, modern age reinvention of um, the series Marvel Man in the uh, like in, in British comics by um, Al- Alan Moore and initially um, like Gary Leach. It was it basically like you know pioneered the whole like you know, everything you know is true about the character, except not like kind of retcon style that um, Moore become become famous for. It's like while working on Swamp Thing, it's like and later like you know Wildcats and you know basically you know a lot of other series he worked on for American comics before like you know he realized that you know like the entire system is corrupt and just um d- d- um dedicated like you know fucking over the creators who didn't own the stuff they were working on. But that's a whole other story right there. Basically Miracle Man um by by Moore, um Gary Leach, Alan Davis Chuck, Chuck Austin, um, Rick Rick Vich, and um, John Totleben, um, was a really good, hugely influential series that basically showed showed you that you know there's no limit to what you can do when you're reinventing like a like a uh, like a familiar, familiar character as long as you've got the imagination needed to do so. Basically, it's like it, it's basically like that's, that's the question of you know what happens when you know a regular guy realizes that hey I used to be a superhero. It's like, and then, you know, go, goes on to imagine, you know, what, what would a superhero, like, you know, do if they were, like, you know, had, had the, you know, all the power they were afforded to them. It's like, in, it's like, it's like in a regular world that wasn't constrained by this, the, by the restraints of a shared universe. The, the short answer there is that they would basically become, become their own god, create their own pantheon, and on lord, not necessarily lord over like humanity, but basically try to do the best, try and raise them up. Basically, um, Moore's um, Moore's run on Miracle Man basically ended with like this character who was just like a you know Silver Age you know riff on you know DC's Cap- Captain Marvel. You know, basically become like become his, become like like leader of his own of his own pan- pantheon, with like you know the, the caveats about him just wondering you know what he would you know do. Like, which like, whether or not he what he had done was actually right or not, because even though like he had basically like, you know like ended like ended war like poverty famine like all the bad stuff that we that you know are still like you know huge issues in our world today, he was still you know kind of like wondering about you know did I do the right thing because even as he had done all this like his ex wife just you know could not you know like you know get behind what he had done, so that's that's a thing thing to consider right there. And, you know, you think, like, okay, well, if more was, like, done, like, after, after this run, who would be crazy enough to uh, to follow up with him on this? I mean, that's that's nuts. I mean, like, why would you want to, like, you know, try and follow up Alan Moore on, like, you know, like an epoch-defining, like, you know, superhero reinvention? Oh, okay, let me add you. Rick Vich was just crazy enough, like, on, on Swamp Thing and all. And, yeah, we've got, we had, like, you know, Joe Casey do his own thing on, like, on Wildcats. But still, it's like, you know, I think it's like, it, it, uh, Paul O'Brien over on the X-Axis and House to Astonish put it best when he said that, you know, writing um, Swamp Thing and not being Alan Moore is basically the comic book equivalent of p- putting a kick-me sign on your back. And you know what? He's not wrong. It's like, I think that, you know, like, you know, when you're trying to follow up Alan Moore on one of his, like, definitive works, you're just kind of, you know, asking yourself to be, like, you know, you know, uh, you know, compared, like, are you really unfavorably to, like, someone who just, like, you know, defined a series, like, it's like, in, like, on, on his own terms. Well, in Miracle Man's case, though, <laughs> Moore was followed up on by one of the all-time greats. Basically, Neil Gaiman, um, like, started, like, started his run, like, on Mir- Miracle Man, like, fall after, after Moore, like, Moore left, and he had, like, a big three-act structure to it. The Golden Age, Silver Age, and the Dark Age. And, you know, it's like the Golden Age, you know, was meant to show, like, hey, you know, this is like, you know, like the Age of Miracles. It's like that everything was, like, great and amazing to Miandi. 
like it's here now. It's like we're not like this isn't like a retrospective idea, though everyone knew that things were great and all. And that those first six issues were meant to like, you know, showcase that that kind of thinking. I uh I can get that kind of idea, but you know, reading um you know like um uh, Gaiman's like, you know, like reprinted um, runs, like it kind of like all. Oh, there's always this nagging feeling that you know, like things weren't like that great for everyone involved. Whether it's from the guy who tried climbing um, the the Olympus Monument to try and ask Miracle Man to uh, bring his um, daughter out of a coma after a kid Miracle Man and his infamous you know um, um raising of London, um like you know put like like put her in there. It's like you know and it's like and how that that turned out. That was. That was not good. And then you got the, uh, it's like the people like, like the Bates, like the John, like, um, Johnny Bates, um, Kid Miracle Man, like, person who perpetrated, like, said raising of London, like, basically them trying to, uh, like, like this, it's kind of, you know, this cult of people, they think, like, oh my God, this dude, this bad guy was so cool and all. It's like, we want to, like, you know, like, pattern our lives after him. It's like, that, that kind of, like, you know, like, like, showcase. Like showcasing of like you know the cult, like cult mindset as well, and also like you know the underworld where like you know the, the dead were brought back to life, including one Emilio Gargunza, the uh, it's like the evil, it's like the evil um quasi Nazi master mastermind who pioneered like the whole idea that scheme that brought a um, Miracle Man back to prominence in the first first place, and oh well yeah bringing him back to life that seems like a sh even if it's in the constraints of the underworld that seems like a great idea. It's like you know that kind, of, that kind of thing. It's like there's all this stuff. Oh, and then there's the uh, the Miracle Babies. Basically, if you want to like have your own like you know spawn of Miracle Man, you can do that. But you know the thing is like the Miracle Babies are just kind of really kind of creepy and just like you know like really self aware and self possessed even after you like give birth to them. And that's just kind of like like signposting like the idea that you know maybe maybe this I this like. Golden Age isn't quite all it's cracked it to be. Even when you get to like the final, like like the final issue, it's like that brings everyone together and you know suggests that you know hey like this create this weird crazy world, you know I mean it's not like cracked up to be. Maybe like you know everyone can just go make a go of it like in of itself. That's fine, and okay, so that, that's good. But that's basically where the series was left after Miracle Man's re reprints from Marvel um in the. Uh, mid um 20, 20 teens because oh god the uh, struggle to get miracle man back in print um after the uh like after like the rights rights to it were just like you know in a legal quagmire for decades at the beginning of the early 90s after eclipse its original publisher in america um went out um, went bankrupt well it's like it just like you couldn't not only could you not like, you know, continue like telling new Miracle Man stories, but you couldn't even reprint the other stuff. Not until a uh, Marvel and um, its Disney augmented lawyers got got involved, and this is also after Neil um, Neil agreed to do, like you know do some work for them, like um, 1602 and um, Eternals. Yeah, I like them pretty like pretty well, but they were also means to an end in terms of like you know getting um, um, Marvel behind behind Gaiman. It's like in order to like you know get. Um, you know, like the rights to Miracle Man sorted. So Marvel basically got everything sorted out and they're able to reprint um Mir like Miracle Man, like the original stories by Alan Moore, now asking to be billed as the original writer. It's like on the original um like volumes. And then, you know, like the uh the first arc of um Gaiman and Mark Buckingham's it's like um like um run, the the Golden Age. Now they were supposed to just you know go right from the reprinting of the Golden Age into like you know continuing the Silver Age, but well, Gaiman, Gaiman's a really busy guy these days, and he's he's also still a really busy guy back when like you know this was originally being like you know reserialized back in 2016 2017. So, so it's like it took it took a while, but the thing is like here we are. Finally, like over two decades after like the first couple issues of the Silver Age were published, we finally, finally have the conclusion to um, Neil Gaiman and Mark Buckingham's second arc of Miracle Man. And yes, it does end with you know a, a uh, 
it's like a, a note to saying like you know hey wait wait for the wait for the next arc in the dark age which you know was advertised in the uh like bonus materials of the golden age basically being when things go bad but um there there we go it's like this is where we are it's like we finally got this continuation and um well you know for a uh continuation of a uh legend uh, legendary series that was well admired like in terms of like it's just influence on 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 superhero storytelling both in America and like in Britain and from creators who are just like you know also enormously well respected for their subsequent works like as well well you know the silver age has just kind of been the reception for it has been really kind of quiet you know in the sense that you know hey new new a new comic by Gaiman in um trade paperback form shouldn't we all be more excited than it is and you know things things aren't really in fact you know this is kind of weird because you know like this second this um this volume of the silver age it's actually being published in paperback first now normally you know i i wouldn't have a problem with this because like i think that you know unless it's like you know really goddamn special everything should be in paperback first but in this case though it's like you know Barrow published like the first four volumes of Miracle Man from Moore and um, Gaiman in hardcover form. So now I'm left with like, oh, well, yeah, your next volume of Miracle Man, it's like it's it's like in soft cover. Oh, okay, fine. I mean, I'll buy it anyway because it's you know Miracle Man. But sure, like you know now like it doesn't match what I've got on my shelf. You know, it's like this is the first version of this this format. But you know that's minor, like minor quibble. Continuing, like, you know, how does it, um, how does it read, you know? How, how are things, how does it all turn out? And, you know, if I'm being honest, I, I think I did like this more than, um, the Golden Age, actually. Mainly because, you know, it's like, it doesn't, I mean, you know, it's, it does have that same pervasive sense of, a, you know, things aren't right, things are going to go bad. But it feels much more appropriate to the story being told here. Because while um, the Golden Age is meant to advertise, and you know, things are being excellent and great, and, you know, we knew this is, like, the time that, you know, this is a time of miracles, um, the Silver Age, um, well, that's kind of, like, it is kind of, like, you know, meant to, like, imply that, you know, well, yeah, things are still good, maybe they're not quite as good as they were before, but, you know, things are, like, going, going somewhere different now. And there's also a, a, uh, like a new angle for these um for the stories as well because like um, compared to like the other miracle man stories this actually focuses on a new member of the miracle man family because while the original um miracle man um mike moran or mickey moran it's like was you know like basically like you know your silver age hero um reborn in the modern era and like the uh person who like you know like led like like spearheaded this um this golden age um, and then you've got like his um, sidekick, Kid Miracle Man, the youngest of the Miracle Man family, um, Johnny Bates, like who went bad as he was like the uh, you know superhero who stayed a superhero and grew up, and then you know like like went went bad and all. Well, now you've got the uh, middle child, um, young Miracle Man, one Dicky Dauntless. No, really. Um, it's like who is, like who, I I I featured. Was mentioned in the original run, but was you know kind of like you know just kind of not 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 talked about a whole heck of a lot. Basically, he was just kind of like the middle middle child, like you know not as old or sophisticated as you know Mike as a Mike Moran, not as you know young or as you know ready to be corrupted as it's like as Johnny Johnny Bates, Kid Miracle Man. Well, he was the the guy who was just like you know going to be like you know just like your middle middle of the road hero hero it appears. At least initially, because when the uh, according to the, the original like you know, run, run of the story, um, like um, John, um, sorry, um, Dickie was um, was the one um, member of the Miracle Man family who was actually murdered like in the Spooko's attempt to wipe out the Miracle Man family that you know, brought an end to their, their storytelling and basically like marked the uh, like like the dividing line between the uh, end of the like, Miracle Man family. And then, like, you know, the, their modern re- reinvention. Basically, he was dead, and, you know, like, that was the, that was basically it. But then, you know, with um, with a Miracle Man and having, like, brought about Utopia on Earth, he figures, you know, hey, I can do anything. 
And in fact, you know, if I want to, like, you know, go ahead and give my uh, my former, like, you know, my brother, um, young Miracle Man, a second chance at life, I can do that. And that's basically, you know, the, the like the thrust of the story here. What happens when you're, you know, a young superhero who whose career is cut tragically short, and you're given a, another another step at life? But also, what about the uh, life you loved, you lived as a, uh, like as a human? Like in addition to your superhero life as well, because this is because like the because we're like it digs into that that as well because while um while Dickie's like you know, initial return is brought about with um like the sense of like wonder and so that oh he's he's back and he can like you know live out his life as he as, as intended, but he's also just kind of like oh my god it's like you know like like uh like uh Miracle Man you're you're, you're Basically, like God now. It's like, and oh my God, what happened to uh, Johnny Bates? Oh, he's dead. And um, all the other like you know superheroes who are just like you know living like you know their own their own best lives in this world. And he's just kind of like you know wondering like, oh my God, it's like what's what's going on here? It's like I want my mom. And and it's and also the idea that you know, hey, you know, it's like because there was also like some hints in the original run that you know, well, maybe Young Miracle Man liked. Uh, regular Miracle Man in a way that was, you know, maybe a bit more than was, uh, that was like, you know, like fraternal, you know, it's like, and you think that, okay, yeah, I can get that, you know, we're doing that whole, like, you know, 80s transgressiveness. This is, you know, hey, you know, like, there's like some gay subsects here that we're going to explore here, but, you know, it's like, to, uh, to Gaiman, Gaiman's credit, it's like, you know, he, he's got a, a bigger idea than that. I mean, yeah, there could be something there, but at the same time, though, there's something um, even like more sinister lurking in the background in terms of like you know when when um, Miracle Man just, like realizes like okay, Dicky, I realized you know, what how you felt, and I want to return those feelings. And Dicky's like, oh God, what have you done? Like this is beastly, and he runs off like into the Alps, and um, that's where the, the series picks up after all these decades. And Miracle Man is just kind of wondering, well, that didn't go as well. It's like, um, Miracle Woman, would you have any idea about, you know, what, um, what's going on here? And she's like, oh, you're just so naive. And like, oh, okay, we'll get back to that as well. But the, uh, the rest of the Silver Age, oh, and I guess it's probably a bit too late to, you know, talk about this, but yeah, I'm going into full spoilers for this, because like, okay, before I go into full spoilers, I do think this is worth reading, but maybe it's not quite as good as everything that, you know, Gaiman has done before, but, you know, when you're talking about, like, a writer like Gaiman, um, it's like the, uh, his least good stuff is still a lot better than a lot of other writers' best efforts, so consider that. But, yeah, as we head into full spoilers here, um, like, like, Dickie, you know, it's like, starts to interact with the world that, um, it's like that, um, that Miracle Man has created. Like he meets um like Jason Oakley, the uh the char- the kid that um Miracle Man met met as a kid, like in the in the Moore run and just had explained to him about, you know, like, hey, what's it like to be a su- superhero? And then he also meets um Tom Caxton. Otherwise known as um, Mr. Master. Like a cr- like a person who like who is the first of like um it's like of a Miracle Man's, you know, like um like superhuman eugenics project. Basically if you wanted to be a superhero, all you do is just sign up on the list, and then you eventually like become like you know be granted like superhero superhuman powers. And um, Tom Caxton was like did get that, and he realized that hey, you know, being a superhero is cool and all, but you know maybe it wasn't exactly what I wanted out of life. And as uh, Dicky um like you know here's his story, and as Tom points out to him like yeah, yeah it's like um Dicky Dauntless that's a real. Yeah, you know, just like the, out of that, um, like like um, Gilbert and Suffer- Sullivan, uh, uh, like a musical. And Dickie's like, "Who? Oh, you don't remember, do you?" Well, there's a turns out there's like also a lot of like um, retconning and um, super superhero backstory I'm finding to be had for Dickie's story as well. And he's and he's helped to that by um one of the uh, one of the superhero superhero um character a mega um a mighty maid. It's like who like she basically like you know helps further acclimate him to the uh, to the wonders of this world from like the uh, people from the artists who create art that you know is unfamiliar to him to to the uh, people who like live in ways that are like you know unfamiliar to him basically like you know 
he he sees like you know people like living in trash heaps in India, and he's like, my God, this is terrible. How can people live like this? And she says, oh, they signed up for that. You know, it's like they there's a waiting list for this. In fact, like you know when you get to the uh, like she finds out like he sees like some guy who's like can't this cancer ridden like person, like he finds out like no this person like actually wanted to live like this. It's like and basically like him him finding out that you know people like are just like you know wanting to live in like weird you know, harmful ways that seem really alien to him he's just like you know wondering what's what's going on here i, I don't get this but you know he's also like concerned with finding out just you know what was my life like before i was young miracle man and it turns out that his life was one that was lived um you know without his um consent really and thanks to um rich johnston for of being cool for like putting this into context because you know he's right um when you fi- when we finally find out about um dickie dauntless's origin i mean it's not his real name it's some weird polish thing that we don't uh, know about but it turns out him calling himself dickie dauntless was the only thing that he did for himself as a kid because he was like you know after his parents died in really awful like circumstances he was sent to live in a like in an awful british orphanage it's like and like um forced to live uh, like on on their terms both in terms of like the abuse that they that they offered him and they subjected him to it's like and in terms of like him being eventually being recruited by the spook show after his encounter with um Emil Gargunza basically nothing that happened to him prior to becoming um young miracle man was his own like was his um was his decision he was just someone who was like you know going along like forced to go along with like the, the people that were um like much older than him like and just like you know, had all the say in his life and um once he you know realizes this once he gets his uh, knowledge knowledge of his own like of his own history he realizes like wait now i have the chance to decide what do i want to do for myself and this is where the uh like the series gets interesting because you know up to this point you know it's been perfectly fine perfectly interesting i mean like Game and Buckingham are creators that, you know, if they want to, like, you know, leave him by the nose for several issues in terms of, you know, hey, you know, how's this going to turn out? You know, they've they've got this credibility from their work on, you know, series like The Sandman and Fables as well. And, you know, it's like, so, it's like when, and so when you get to the final issue, oh, and I guess also worth mentioning, though, at this point, that, you know, um, in terms of, like, the, the creative, like, um, balance between the series, um, Gaiman is only credited as the right as a sole writer for the first three issues. He's credited as a co-writer with Buckingham for issues four through seven. Now, I understand that you know this isn't a case of just you know Gaiman offering up his like you know like notes you know to Buckingham and saying go best of luck man go for it. But apparently they have actually like, you know collaborated on the uh, storyline you know going forward. And Gaiman is also prized you know working with like his artistic collaborators like on stories you know like before this but but also it's like it's just worth noting that you know like this is also probably a practical necessity given that you know Gaiman has been busy working on um the te- the, the the streaming adaptations of the sandman and it's like and good omens as, like as well so it's like it would if um they ha- there hadn't been like some kind of division of labor with like buckingham helping helping out and he's a solid writer on his own terms but um but you know just the idea that you know if they hadn't done this like you know we probably would have, we probably wouldn't be reading this right now because like the schedule for this was you know the schedule for the silver age being published by marvel was just like wow this is another reason why i read um stuff in like in, in, in trade paperback collect editions and you know buckingham's um, work on the series is really solid. He he's good with the drama. He's good with the action. He's good with like the superhero like you know fighting between like the Miracle Babies and the op- opening issues. It's really good work. Until you look at his, what he did on um, the Golden Age, and my God, that was that is still like some fantastic work. As um, Buckingham just like you know busted out a new style like in every single storyline. It was incredible. Just see like you know what's he going to do next. And uh, Silver Age just kind of him doing like the most polished version of the style you see him do do on Fables. And okay, I get it, and I understand that you know okay, that's that's not it. That's maybe maybe it's a little disappointing, but at the same time, the you know 
you know, you get older, it's like you realize that, you know, maybe you're not as crazily artistic ambitious as you were. And that's a little disappointing. But at the same time, though, what he does here is still really solid and does tell the story like, um, like really well. Just don't expect like, you know, him to just, you know, try and top himself from what he uh, did in the golden age. Cause you know, he probably would have like, you know, like I'm, I'm glad that, you know, he didn't try to top because he probably would have like, you know, maybe killed himself in the process trying to like, uh, like a uh, match that level of like artist, artistic quality there. So there you go. So it's good work, but you know, it's like, it's, like I said, I, I do want to look forward to seeing what he does in the Dark Age when it arrives eventually. But how does this end? I mean, like, what happens when um, Dickie finally gets his, his knowledge of, like, you know, what he used to be and uses it to um, address, you know, what's the story to become? Well, that's actually really interesting because his idea is he's going to become Satan. He basically, like, you know, looks at the, uh, the world that um, Miracle Man has created and thinks that you know, it's not all right. It's like, you know, and also it's like, it's something that is like, you know, like subject to any any level of like criticism, you know? It's like, you know, it needs, like, someone needs to challenge it, and I'm going to be that person. And um, that's, that's actually, I think it's a, that's a really interesting um, way to, to uh, consider, like, to like, take the story go, like going forward. Just the idea that, you know, hey, you know, it's like, Utopia's our main problem is, it, is it's going to get boring, because everyone's like, you know, living their best life all the time, and how they know well, well that, that's, the best, that's the best life anymore. It needs, you know, that, that challenge. You know, it needs the serpent to come in and say, hey, can I upend everything here? And if I can, then was it Utopia at all? And I'm really curious to see how that goes, because there's, there's reason to indicate that, you know, maybe, like, like that's not how, like, this things aren't all as cracked to crack be. Like, the idea that, you know, that was set up that I felt in the golden age was right. The idea that, you know, Hey, it's like, like this, this utopia isn't utopia after all. It needs interrogation by an outside force. And uh, maybe Dickie is going to be the person to do it. And also, you know, things are hinted at, you know, like that all is not right with the miracle man family, because, you know, miracle woman, you know, here's this and goes like, you know, that's not right. Why are you letting him do this? Like, Oh, okay, fine. Just go ahead. Let him have Australia. Let him have, like spread his word and see what he does. What he does, like, you know, like what's what's this all in the grand scheme of things? And the uh, end of this volume, like, it, it implicates implies that you know maybe like you know there's there's more going here. That you know maybe um Dicky will be the proper serpent. Maybe he'll even be the serpent to reject the uh, influence of John, Johnny Bates as all well because, well, even though Bates was uh killed. Like in the Moore run, and I'm saying killed in air quotes here. He, uh, he's not. His presence is not quite gone here. But at the same time, same time though, it's some. It's a presence that also is like able to be um, rejected or at least addressed by um, by Dicky. So maybe like he's able to like, you know accept you know like what's going on with um, with Bates. It's like and um, maybe like you know present it in a more constructive fashion. Rather than just, you know, murdering the fuck out of London and um, letting it stand as, like, the, uh, like, the definitive, like, you know, comics, comics violence event that, you know, people have been trying to, like, you know, replicate for, like, decades on now. And also, I do, I do like how, um, Gaiman, like, you know, um, writes Bates here. In the sense that he's, that, like, my main issue with, with Bates and Moore's run was that, you know, he was just, like, you know, presented, like, someone who, like, he went bad. He spent too long as an adult, like, in superhuman form. And so, like, he, like, basically, like, you know, grew too used to this power and doing whatever he wanted, you know. And um, Gaiman just, you know, writes him as much as a much more, like, seductive presence, like, here. Someone who just, like, you know, hey, it's like, you know, I knew what I wanted to do. It's like, and I've had plans for it. It's like, and maybe you can, like, help me out, I'm Dickie. So, it's a much more, like, you know, reasonable take on the on the character here. It's like, and I, it's like, I like that. And even if, like, you know, it's presented as, like, you know, hey, it's like, you know, come on, Dickie, let me out in, like, the final pages. Like, there's a, it, there's, like, a reason to believe there's a more struggle to be had here. And I like that. I, uh, like, I mean, even if, you know, like, this isn't, you know, like, the uh, 
big super revisionist epic continuation that you know that we were all hoping it would be like decades after you know like um that game and like left off and like more like you know set the stage well i still like the silver age it's like even though it's like you know i think its charms are a bit more like um subtle and like you know it kind of like you know relies on like you having like belief that um Gaiman and um, Buckingham are going to take this someplace interesting like in the end. I think that they do offer enough here even though, you know, like just finding out that, you know, oh, well we're going to give you the, the Dark Age the concluding chapter to our story eventually but it's probably going to be a while. I mean um, Johnston basically said that, you know, hey, I'm fine with waiting another 30 years for this to happen and um Okay, you know, sure, man, fine. But in terms of this, you know, like people like you know giving this, giving Miracle Man its due, like in this this day and age, you know, it's like it's possible that you know there's only gonna be like you know a few handful of diehards, you know, waiting to find out just you know what happens to the end of um Dee Dauntless and um Mike Moran's and um Johnny Bates's um story. It's like at at the end, you know, in these next um years or God forbid decades. I I think that it's worth waiting for, but um, I can understand if um, it's like if um, people like look at this and go like maybe I don't necessarily want to hang out for this because like I like my super, my comics to be delivered in a uh, timely fashion and that's totally fair. I get it. That's why I wait for like uh, you know collected editions like this in the first place. That being said, um, if you've never read um, Alan Moore's or the original writers. Miracle Man run, there is going to be a uh, reprint of Omnis reprint from Marvel like in the near future, and so I highly recommend that, like, if you've never um, read it before. In fact, um, like, the, uh, his original like, um, the original reprints of his store, of his, um, um, of the, the Marvel reprints of his run have actually gone out of print, and in fact, they're even worth even more now compared to, like, the overpriced, um, Amounts they were worth um, being published in hardcover um, back in the day. I didn't have. I mean, like, yeah, I think they're really overpriced for what they were. But at the same time, though, we were just like you know getting Miracle Man reprinted like for the first time in decades. So yeah, I'm gonna pay this price no matter what because it's a really great story. But um, but yeah, it's like um, game and stuff. It's still worth it. But you know, it's like I can I can understand if you're not. Um, like gonna want to you know dive into like the first two parts of a three part story when part three is way <laughs> way off in the future, but hey, you know we'll see how that goes. Okay, so you know what you're gonna be talking about next time. Actually, no, man. It's like it's gonna be uh, a surprise to both you and me. All right. Well, that sounds great. We'll catch you next time on Comic Picks by the Glick. Ladies, everyone.